So I'd like to start out by giving you all just a brief overview of what we're planning to talk about. I want to talk about the background of some of the uh, punch and shear issues in the code. I want to be in with just some general information about punch and shear, talk about the code models, some of the issues impacting the punch and shear capacity of uh, columns and flat plates, and then discuss how uh, openings can be considered and what their impact is, and how tolerances may want to be considered and what their impact can be, and then just go back over what we've talked about. So I want to start out, I'm not expecting you all to read this entire slide. The, the main purpose here was just to give you some background on some of the references that I think are probably most relevant to today's presentation. And hopefully it'll give you a little bit of background if you want to dig into it. Obviously, ACI 318, which is actually the second one on my list here, but um, is central to the entire discussion of flat plate punching and design. Um, the International Building Code. Today I'm going to talk primarily about the 2012 IBC because that's what I actually had on hand when I was preparing this presentation initially. But um, all the points I make about the 2012 IBC, I've been able to confirm are consistent with what's seen in the 2015 IBC. Um, ACI 117, jumping back to the top of the slide, the specification for tolerances on concrete construction materials. Typically, that's something that, as design engineers, we often reference for our uh, specifications. And when we say we want this built within tolerances, if we have some project specifics, we'll put those in there. But generally, when I've reviewed either our own specifications or the specifications from other firms, uh, when we've done any type of peer review, most everyone re references ACI 117 to one degree or another. Today, we're going to talk primarily about what's in 117.10, but I'm going to reference back to some of the earlier versions in passing. Um, ACI 352.1R, 421.1R, 421.2R are all some committee reports from ACI that I think give some better depth to some of the issues that are addressed with regard to punching shear. I think that will help you dig your teeth in if you're looking for more information beyond what we're able to cover in today's seminar. And of course, ASC 710, which is the uh, governing uh, design loads document to some extent. A couple of additional references. Uh, Clark and Gamble, I, you know, generally I've looked at the 1980 version, but there's a 99 printing as well. Uh, I found that to be very good for discussions of a number of the fundamental aspects of calculation of punching shear parameters and calculation, uh, excuse me, uh, parameters and calculation of the uh, punching shear perimeter and how some of the opening effects and changes to the symmetry of the punching shear perimeter impact the demands for punching shear. Um, Alexander and Simons, uh, Jack Maley's paper from 88, uh, Grossman from 89, and Professor Gali and his colleagues' paper from 2015 all uh, helped shed some light on some of the discussions that have gone on both in the research community and in the design community uh, talking about punching shear over time. And I will be addressing some of the issues that are brought up in those papers in the course of the presentation. So for those of you who are familiar with The Princess Bride, uh, feel free to laugh. That's OK. That's great. For those of you who aren't, I apologize for the inside joke. Um, in the, the Princess Bride, there's, there's two classic blunders that are cited in this climactic scene. The first, of course, is never get involved in the land war in Asia. And the second is never go against the Sicilian when death is on the line. I would actually submit that there is a third classic blunder to which structural engineers are uniquely susceptible, which is never underestimate the potential for punching your problems. We will often have a typical detail on our plans that says, oh, where's my little cursor here? So we'll often have a typical detail on our plans. I'm not getting my pop-up cursor here. Um, they'll say, hey, oh, there it is. We'll get a typical detail on our plans. It'll say, hey, we're allowed to um, put you, contractor, you're allowed to put a certain size opening a certain distance from the column without necessarily consulting the structural engineer. I've seen that on a number of different sets of plans that I've peer-reviewed. Frankly, that kind of a detail makes me nervous. Um, I really do want my contractors to come to me and say, hey, I would really like to put an opening here and here and here. I'd like to see it on the shop drawings, ideally, myself. But, you know, however it ends up, we end up permitting a, an opening and then invariably we get a request for information that says, hey, can I add an opening over here? 